Hello everyone, welcome back to part 9 of the Mystery of the Bevel Blocks. If you have not already, please try to catch up on the previous episodes as we are building upon concepts brought up in those episodes. Today we're going to look at some more famous sites, and the good thing about famous sites is they come with a lot of good pictures and high quality photos. So, first we're going to start with the Temple of Apollo and pretty much the whole Delphi complex, but the Temple of Apollo itself the, was the first thing I noticed. Um, the platform that it's built upon has nubs and is bevel block, and below it you start to see some more crazy things going on. So. We'll zoom out here and go back. Again, this base is very strange to me. The way they all fit together, like loaves of bread, just very clean. Strange processing marks. I don't know what to call some of this stuff. And of course the nubs. Sometimes there's two on one. Sometimes I believe these are just eroded. I think they all had them all the way down just like uh, at the Suggesta Site that temple that that foundation also had them going all the way around I believe this site was very similar and at least this platform area had them going all the way around These cat these columns and capitals are extremely old right extremely weathered they're the Doric style capital, the one that's left. They are segmented and they are not fluted, but they are still pretty impressive for their size and the fact that they're still holding together. So those are interesting to me, probably original. The color variation is interesting too. Um, let's see, next below, one step down, and of course here you can see these are fluted but I believe also contemporary because of the erosion, right? You can see this one in the background, the non-fluted and the similar weathering. So stylistically, they're supposed to one come after the other, but I believe these are all contemporary. And then below, this amazing polygonal wall. And these columns too. I'm not sure about these columns. If these maybe one piece, and they're still pretty impressive. They they could be original. But this wall is amazing, isn't it? It is so haphazard, and it has square anomalies in it. There's a lot to look at if you could just stare at this wall for days. But there's not just this. There's more going on around the whole complex. Here's a, a wider shot of the foundation. And you can see just weird elements going on around here. Some of this stuff I believe is the original configuration. These spaces underneath. And you can see all these instances of where metal ties or metal clamps went in and held all these blocks together. So overlapping hallmarks so the, these Greek sites a lot of them are gonna have a lot of overlapping hallmarks and these are the most finely executed and best examples so now we're gonna jump off of the list but I want to see some more pictures and first there's another angle of that platform so you can see these a little better the, the weathering underneath the erosion, I, I'm not sure if this is just, these were roughly thrown together blocks, and this is all contemporary. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. This They would maybe say this is older and built upon, but some of this stuff looks like it was just, they didn't care about the lower portion, and they just wanted the top to look good in this execution. Some of these blocks down here are kind of strange looking. But also zoom back farther this is where we just were now you see this giant amphitheater like we saw at Andriaki there's amphitheaters square little hole anomalies all peppered around through this thing and look at the bottom 
The bottom is polygonal, a polygonal floor. That's very interesting to me. And most of them seem to have these little like flanking stones, these border stones that stand up, that go around the standing stones. I, I guess just as a uh, as a railing, right? A, an ancient railing. You can see where the grass is growing, where it used to go all the way around. And now they just have little ropes and metal bars. But I believe all that's original and contemporary. And you can see on some of these that there's like a, a, a worked edge. So there's a recess for your butt and a little raised portion for the bottoms of your legs to be more comfortable. So that's a nice little touch. And it looks like it goes all across this, in, this entire thing. Really impressive amphitheater, right? And then there's this thing. And this caught my eye just today looking at it because of our talks about the Chilpa Towers and those other gravestones. And I, and I believe it was uh, Shermanator or maybe Ziggy Dan. We're both kind of, all three of us are kind of uh, going back and forth right now with ideas. But we were talking about the top of Sacsayhuaman and how it has a circular base for something and like potentially a tower but it is long gone and just there's just rubble laying around and most of that's gone too so we don't know what that was but this thing whatever this was now it had all kinds of formal elements around it right this had nice columns all the way around it like this but this middle thing also must have been really big and chunky and really impressive and first before we go to some close-up pictures I want to bring your attention to again you see the little three incised motifs that's gonna be peppered around some more sites around here and in other places we keep looking also the stairs going up this little three-step motif I think that just it, it's interesting some of these how they just tie together there's like the Ethiopian uh, rock cut churches for example they just have a similar stair steps going up that goes around the entire perimeter even though there's only four doors just a faceted thing again it's, a, it's an artistic motif and I, I think it's it's too much to be coincidence but uh, we can see here here's another angle so we can see this older wall and this clearly is repair rubble you know after long after maybe a, a cataclysm even right we're talking so this is a re-inhabiting of the site and this is repair but let's look at this picture this picture is huge and I wanted to draw your attention first off to the middle of the structure and look at these blocks and how they're processed the pitted surfaces right are recessed and the margins stick out so now, uh, now we cannot entertain that they were they made the bevels for, um, or they left the bevels to uh, to save time and save energy, because this is a, this is an inverse of what we've been seeing. This this would required more work, and I believe this might be uh, the sim like a similar finishing as the um, Alexander the Great tomb, the other big circular. Uh, site we saw but as a negative of this the pockmark surfaces stuck out and the very nicely margined stuff was recessed these are like an inverse of that but it's why why how and why and how does that happen that's that I don't understand the processing right it looks molded to me that's the only thing I can say molded very interesting finishing technique and there are other instances of very fine finishing lips and edges. There may be little filler stones in some of this stuff. Some of these probably had metal clamps. This is obviously a repair of who knows when, but this all mortar. These just stacked up. Who knows if this was even the original spot for them. But the site is littered with the debris. This thing was huge. It was at least two stories. So it's just an amazing foundation with all this. And you see all the other column bits. So it did have columns that went all the way around, more than likely. And the triple motifs that went probably all the way around like a, like a, like a border or a coping 
like we saw again at the Chulpa Towers. Maybe that, you know, here it is a formal, decorative, elaborate, fancy execution, and whatever it did or whatever it was for may have been the same as the cruder, sim simpler Chulpa Towers. Just a hypothesis, I don't know. But there's a lot of rubble around this thing. This thing was cool. It, it must have been pretty impressive. Uh, some of this stuff up here repair, obviously, even they put some scratches in it. Yeah, that's blocks, right? Yeah, that'll that'll pass for some blocks. And maybe there's some decorative pieces they found on the ground. They plonked those back up there, slapped some mortar to keep them still. But, you know, at least they tried. I can see you, they, they left you enough to where you can see the, the, the cornices here. These are original. And this protruding cornice here, that's kind of interesting. More than likely original. This whole freestand, this part was the probably, you know, last part part that they could re-erect. I mean, obviously the repairs here, but this is a part that they must have been able to find all the pieces of and get back together. I'm going to say this was more than likely an original configuration, and it continued all the way around. The simple dork style. And notice the columns get wider at the bottom here. Some of these have just been sat around. Maybe they're not their original locations. You can see some of them have their own little bases. But these are really interesting. They have wider. They swell out just like at the Parthenon. Very interesting. Okay. And then lastly, lower down the hill, you can see this is the wall from earlier. This temple. It's very interesting to me. First, you can see the wall even up next to it has polygonal elements and is bevel block and does have square anomalies and then this the structure itself has some square anomalies some of this stuff could be for uh you know architectural elements gates and things but other ones just they're they're too oddly placed to me some of these ones at the score at, at the corners again um also if you, if you look close it's kind of hard to tell but the motif around the doorway, the incised motif again that kind of sticks out, we see that again. So I believe this is a an original structure. I, ha <clears throat> I have to conclude that this is an original structure again. The columns have been repaired and plastered. Perhaps, yeah, definitely up here as well. But again, the triple motif I believe is original and even the roof and everything I believe in the columns I believe are original I do not know about the artistic panels right the freezes I'm not sure about those those could be a later edition or they could be original um, they were you also see those at the Parthenon and, and other places as well other classical Greek sites so I don't know you, know, you look at the motifs on them they're classical Greek motifs in, 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 the, in the illustration so I really don't know what to make of those illustrated panels but um, again you see these are bevel blocks finely dressed stones more bevel blocks down below the whole base perhaps even another incised mark a sign of processing because it goes over blocks right it's a straight line down again and that's how the recesses here are created same way just looks a little bit too straight and perfect but you know the Greeks could do some good things and the Romans could do some good things too so I don't know these kind of get a little blurry and, and again this is where I need your all's help to keep me on the right track and make sure I'm not saying anything wrong or uh, getting any of these mixed up so we'll move on and it was at this point in the research that I was starting to make the South American connections, right? So the first thing that really brought attention was the trapezoidal doors, like we saw at uh, the, the Arcadian Gate in uh, Messini, and that uh, tower and that wall. That looked straight, almost identical to uh, South American structures. And I looked at it for a second thinking it might have been mislabeled. So I, I, was, I was blown away when I found out it was in Greece. So we've talked about this in the gate episode, so I won't spend too much time on it. But we do see strange things going on with this gate. You know, in addition to the very, very shallow 
and and very uh, you know organic soft geometric or I mean um, how, what would you call this it's just it doesn't look chiseled to me it looks more like it was soft right it's just rounded edges on all of them just very subtle and they they see more pr pronounced and as they get lower they just they disappear right they fade away I don't know how you would describe that other than just that they were soft and then down here at the bottom these are interesting to me of course it, the, the holes but then you see lines that connect the holes and go around the corners and this is where I start thinking that the uh, wedge holes are connected which the other album that I have I know I've been neglecting I've been neglecting all those but the wedge holes I believe some of them are not wedge holes they are signs of processing or they were for something and this example it, with these blocks this is I, I assume is still the same block it's just been the edge has been worked recessed back holes have been made and then lines across have been made over here there aren't any it's very strange but I, I don't even know what the the holes would be for again or this lower cutout if there was a piece that went in here and more elements that finished this off like a deck and a platform I, I could I could see that but you know why not just do it in stone you know it's just kinda odd to me who knows what that's about and then I focused on those and started searching for some more things that looked odd first trapezoidal windows again now we're in Cusco at the Cori Concha and I, I noticed right away the lowest course is, is a bevel block it's a, it's a very shallow bevel block again usually in, in these scenarios they're at the bottom and everything above is a lot more finely dressed but it's all polygonal you know we, we're pretty familiar with some of these South American examples trapezoidal in terms of the uh, the walls as well as the windows um, there's some really cool overhead views of this thing that I don't have but there's a lot of crazy what I'm just gonna call processing going along uh, uh, around the top of this this uh, the all these walls pretty much uh, maybe I'll, I'll stop it and get a Google image search for you but there's just a lot of crazy things going on with this structure like these three square holes not lifting no drainage maybe for drainage that's a drain what else could that be I don't know one lone nub now tell me that's for lifting or tell me tell me give me any other kind of recommendation I, I really have no idea I have no idea and this giant capital which looks to be a very very old ruined ionic capital the scroll style or maybe even Corinthian style really flowery but this appears to me to be not an altar or a table this looks like some kind of capital for some giant column perhaps I don't know maybe it's upside down maybe there was more to it and it was a statue that could be as well but in its orientation here and what's left of it it reminds me of a column capital so I started looking more at this place and this is a great picture it's huge if you go on Google images you can get an even bigger picture it, this picture barely fits and can barely load on my album it will take us a second <laughs> here we go so we're gonna see a lot of interesting things here guys so first of all what is it right it's this giant ship like rounded like a ship hole shaped protrusion outcrop foundation what would you call this thing and there's one more thing like this in South America it's an Ecuador and it's more of a round defensive fort shape. I'll pull that up in an image too. But for, for now, let's just let's focus on this thing. Because look how, look how good this image is, right? Look how impressive this is. Now look at the margins. These are not pick marks. This is processing. 
This, these, what, what else can you say but being softened? The, the edges are protruding and like they're pushed together. And the surfaces of the rest of the stone are different. The margins look different. And the, the, the square anomalies, again, here's a corner. This one you could call one maybe cracked. Some other things here, what would you call this? What is that, damage? Some of these I, might have, I think might have been intentional. Like to uh, to crack and to you know relieve stress on and and break on purpose maybe square anomaly there strange just protruding part here and then when we go around to this top course it is smaller yes smaller stones but it's just as interesting polygonal element and you can see the very formal. This is the most formal part of the whole thing, but I believe it's all contemporary up to this point. And it's all very uniform, all very formal. But then as the structure gets lower, the blocks get bigger. And then when you get over to the corner, the whole thing just loses its mind. You have the big swoop in it. This is not level anymore. You have polygonal elements, irregular stones. It just gets crazy in places. It's an amazing, amazing picture. I highly recommend you guys Google this one and spend time looking at this thing and just contemplating it. It's, it's unbelievable to me. This looks all original. I don't know what to... I mean, I can only explain the color variation here as it was a different part of the quarry. And they were, you know, but it was nearby... So that's why you see the variations. Some of this stuff leaching out, you know, this may be repair mortar, surface remor maybe in like instances like this, they've filled in with white mortar and that's what's leaching out. Some of this stuff could have mortar all around it though. They could be repaired. I'm not going to rule that out. But it looks real good. It looks like very faithful to what it was. So whoever if it is a repair, that's a great job. And of course, this thing on top, I think above here, everything is questionable. All the wood elements are questionable. Anything that, anything that has mortar in it, basically, I'm going to say is questionable, right? That's, that's our, our main no-no right now. But you notice some things that people don't really point out about these sites in South America with the relation to the Spanish conquest is there's a lot of eerie similarities between the way the Spanish built in some cases and the way the Incans built and either it was a legacy and maybe a remembrance of some things they had over in their countries or maybe some of this stuff might be original reincorporated elements guys that I'm gonna propose some of that I mean for example here if is this Spanish and if so the bevel blocks are they like a legacy like like is this a is this a nod to the original builders that the spanish have done with their church with with their triple gate or is this a, an original gate you know is that so, is that heresy to to meant to to contemplate this all looks like mortar and the the quality looks spanish right the the, the cornice this all yeah spanish but it's kind of eerie when you look at the stuff we've been looking at and how, I don't know guys, I just, some of this stuff makes me wonder. Some of these elements may have been reclaimed from the older structure that if, I, this is definitely a reconfigured structure. The, we'll, we're going to talk about this like we've talked about the Jerusalem site. This is a heavily reconfigured structure. So the original elements, this big thing, yes. This wall down here, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's dry laid. It's finely dressed, right? We saw instances of this in Jerusalem as well. And it's just one of those, I don't know. It's well done. And it complements this structure nicely. So I don't know. It's almost like to even have this larger structure, you would need this lower wall, right? So I don't know. I'm going to say maybe. All of this back here 
Spanish, mortar, rubble, reclaimed elements. All that as well. They, the nicest blocks they were able to find, they used for the corners. Some of, some of this stuff, I don't know. Maybe reclaimed or maybe recarved. But I don't know. I just, I don't know. Some arches are interesting to me, right? This would be one of the only instances in South America or in the Americas of uh, a true rounded arch, barrel arch. So, Okay, and here's a great picture. This is another really big one. Um, obviously, this is a CGI artist interpretation of what they thought it originally looked like on top. Uh, let's let my box go away. They thought a hut was up there with... Uh, the thatched roof, maybe? I don't know. With a gold trim railing? I don't know. Get out of here. They're crazy. Um, let's look at look again at this lower wall and this these walls in the background, right? If these do extend lower into the ground, then these may be secondary and may be done by later peoples as a tribute to these older, larger, more impressive versions. <clears throat> but if they are required for the foundations of these structures, we're going to have to assume that this is also contemporaneous with this larger stuff. So, again, size is impressive, but it's also the execution. It's also the fitment. The fitment on all these stones are really impressive to me. They all have a, a slightly polygonal attribution to them, right? And each one looks over here, they look pretty good, but in some instances they get really strange. And then the corners, trapezoidal. So, this image has some really interesting things again. Some of these marks, I don't know what to call these, damage, intentional relieving spaces. I don't know. I really don't know what you would call that. But, these had to be intentional, but for what? And over here, is this just a uh, accident, bad cut? But these, these are like in the middle of the of the stones. The only thing that, that would do that and overcut is a, a giant saw cutting this would cause an overcut into the next block. That's the only thing that would cause that. And look here, how the foundation slips away and slopes away and it and it does that at every step at the bottom so it kind of it's, it's it's like overlapping and it's not level but it corrects itself the structure corrects itself gets to these this point here and you can see there's a few stones that look like the state of utah like this one and this one and this one and those are the ones that are locking everything together and bringing the structure back formal so that in, and here's another one, so that in the upper structure everything stays straight. Here's another one. And then, I love this picture, it's also really detailed. You can see faint traces of nubs. So now again, these are not for lifting. And traces of, uh, of processing is what I'm going to say and that they didn't care that they were there. The rest of this was done either a different way or that they, they cared that this part didn't have nubs but for some reason they didn't really care up here. The blocks get smaller, the fitment stays really tight. I believe all this is original all the way. So if we look back at the bottom, these could be, you know, same age as the ones on top because they're just as good, just a darker stone. Maybe a harder stone, but still. This is a cutout portion that was missing and filled in with some really crude stuff, obviously. You can see maybe some staining from years of water running over it. And I believe that's what's happening here. Maybe the water running over stain. I don't know, but I'm guessing that. The white stains, I'm going to say, are patches and mortar where they filled in. Maybe some of them they filled in erroneously. They filled in some of these other ones. Uh, not realizing what they were. So, that's a possibility. But also could be 
that these were really damaged portions of the structure that were you know about to collapse and those were necessary but that's why I believe those white streaks are about so very interesting site outside and inside Okay, and for the inside, we're just going to breeze through Google Images. You can go to Cory Concha inside, see them for yourself. But elements like the tiny filler stones, right? Very, very strange construction method. Why? I don't understand that. And then, let's see, this gate. There's a gate or false gate. I don't know what you call it, but it's very strange, right? It has... Oh, this might be a big, very large photo. No, it's okay. Yeah. Very strange holes, just like we saw at the Machu Picchu gate. And again, lines connecting them again. So I don't think those lines in the in the Machu Picchu gate were accidental. They, they're whatever these are. Same thing. Again, the holes, why? But these, you could, these are, in fact, bevel blocks, are they not? This is a bevel. This is a margin. Otherwise, the entire structure is entirely finely dressed. But it does have all the other anomalies and hallmarks in it. And here you go. Here's the top of that temple room, whatever you want to call that. But, again, you can see faint lines of processing, like a, a, a molded edge, a, a recessed edge. But then also instances where the stones have been pressed together <clears throat> and there's a lip of material like they've been softened I don't know what else to call that other than being softened and it extends down and then you run into oh sorry they run into all these score marks these what are these about I, I this is processing again or um, I, perhaps a way like Perhaps with pottery, you if you're making a, a, a pot or a, a jar vessel uh, with coils of clay, you score the layers as you make them so that they stick together. So is this a pottery method that we're seeing imply, incorporated in stone? And was this made in stone? Like it, it's, what, are we, what are we invoking at this point, right? Just very... Very strange things is going on at this side. Here's that gate from the other side. I believe it has two sides, and there's parts where it's broken through, but originally it looks to appear to have been a, a false door, just with the, motes, the mirrored motif on both sides. That's very interesting to me. And here again, you see them. They go around the corner, and they crisscross at the end. And it's a perfect design at the end, too. Do you notice that? It has two square ones, a 90 degree, and then these two overlap, <clears throat> excuse me, so that it creates a mirrored pattern on the diagonal. So it's like they had a stick and were, were just uh, scoring this and then came to the corner, made that, and kept on going. You know, I, I don't know how else... To, de to describe that, but it looks like a pottery method to me. As, as an artist, I, I, I don't know what else to call that. that. That baffles me, guys. And here's another view of that gate again, guys. There may have been portions of it that did open to the inside, but this, this connection point here, this looks original, and perhaps even here as well, right? So this this is just a strange shape. I'll try to find another image of that, but that's just, it's a very strange execution to me. Um, this is also interesting. Look at these, these little holes, right? They look outgassed to me. That's the only thing I can describe those as. And we saw those at the tomb of uh, Atreus, I believe you call is how it's pronounced, uh, in Greece, or it was Turkey, maybe. The... Um, but that large trapezoidal entryway and the stones above the uh, tri triangular corbel arch had small little vent holes like this. Right? I'm going to call them vent holes. Uh, maybe we'll do an album called Vent Holes. But these appear to be outgassing marks where the structure was cooked 
and gases escaped. Perhaps even if there's metal clamps in there, it was fumes from the metal getting hot inside. I don't know. Just an idea. And yes, the site does have more nubs. And here, on say this block that has them placed symmetrically, I would say, okay, maybe for lifting. Or here, where there's two on one, maybe for lifting. But others just have one in odd places. Almost they're like they're bubbles. Uh, something pushing from underneath and almost getting to the surface and not making it to the surface. And perhaps, like here, one has popped and that is the hole left over from that happening. Maybe that is what we see in other instances where these pop and become whole anomalies in structures. Maybe. But not in all cases, but maybe in some cases. Very, you know, interesting thing to think about. But also we have this wall. And I wanted to bring this up for the fact that nubs for lifting at this point, no, this this is decorative or processing only. That's the only things that this could be. They are symmetrical on both sides. You have a small one, a small one, and then a larger one, and then out of frame is another larger one. You can see another picture. Another, if you want, look up another angle. I couldn't find one readily, but it's out there. It's in Vlad's video. Um, here, vertical, long elements, short, horizontal elements, a nub here, there's a nub right out of frame here, but then you get down to here and there's only one, if that is one. Yeah, I'm going to say that's one. And there isn't one over here. So, sym symmetrical in some places, and then in other places, no. But when they are symmetrical, I'm going to say they're artistic, or they were used for the installation of art. It's the only thing I can think of. This little shrined-in trapezoidal area is very interesting to me. Especially the corner. I, it's, a, it's a symmetrical... I don't know how you describe that. Is that weathering? Or was that some byproduct of the processing of the stone? Because if you, the left, if you split it down the middle, the left half and the right half are mirror of each other. I don't know how that happens, right? Maybe that's just a trick of the photo. It's not over here. It's heavily eroded. So we could make the, the case that this is damage. But man, that's crazy looking to me. I don't know. Well, have you gotten tired of me saying I don't know yet in this video? Because I've said it a lot. Um, I'm going to say it a lot in South America because I really don't know what I'm looking at. Uh, this is the best picture I could find of this gate, doorway, I don't know what you want to call it, the missing elements, and the original layout is a mystery to me. Um, I want to say that this portion here was supposed to be open and left open, and then this portion went all the way across and was broken into to gain an entrance into this room, maybe. Or through cataclysm, maybe. Upper elements, perhaps missing, fell out, broke and fell out, we'll say. We'll speculate. And perhaps there was a upper rectangle and a lower rectangle opening as the original configuration. And then what's going on with the braided looking header stone, this lintel, I guess you call this a, a little lintel. This is really the lintel above it, but this little piece, decorative insert, what is it doing and how is it made and what is it, what is it for, what does it represent? All questions that are probably your questions too, right? That's why we're here, that's why we're talking about it. So, there's a lot of strange stuff going on in South America, and I really can't get my head wrapped around it, guys. Um, it, no one really has either. Brian Forrester seems to be the only guy tackling this stuff, uh, along with maybe a few others. You could say Hugh Newman. He, dem he ventures into South America, too. And David Hatcher, Hilt Childress, and a few other people. They might come to some more crazy conclusions. But we're seeing some crazy things, aren't we? 
So who's to say at this point who's right or wrong? I'm just trying to look at physical evidence and see where that takes me. For example, I saw in this photo here, you can clearly see that this is a rebuilt structure in by the Spanish in, in the time after the conquest because here is a stone that had a metal clamp and this is obviously not the original configuration, mortar everywhere. All the uh, artistic elements look like they're in great condition, great shape, and you can clearly see that the older blocks have a distinctly different level of pitting on the surface. And the color is a little darker as well, right? Now, if we're going to say that this block here and perhaps some of these other blocks are from an older structure that incorporated clamps, and then we look at a photo like this, now what would you make of this? You would say, okay, all this Spanish, right? Well, what if I propose that all the nicer blocks are old blocks and this is just a reconstructed site and reconfigured with extra elements, but there were core ancient elements of these sites that had arches, perhaps. Is that a heretical thing to say? That they had rounded, barrel-vaulted arches in the Americas? in the ancient past, before the Spanish got there. These are anomalous square holes at corners. <clears throat> and I'm going to say this motif, these, these are dry laid, by the way. This, this may be, you know, mortar, but these are, appear dry laid to me. These look like they were restacked, maybe. Look at the pitting on the surfaces, on all these surfaces. These are ancient blocks, and how the weathering on this goes around the corner here. This bevel. Are these all one block, or are these two blocks, like over here? What is this? Is this has that recess as well? Is this are these polygonal elements? Very interesting, right? So I don't, I don't know. You could say this is all Spanish, but yeah, maybe all this rubble stuff is Spanish. But maybe these are all reclaimed elements and re repurposed because if you were going to take the time to make this nice beautiful arch, right, why would you find some older rocks and then fill half of it up and then make yourself a nice beveled top piece for it? Obviously the gate is Spanish or newer, but the older elements just seem like they could be traditional Greek and Roman elements as well. The, 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 these arch elements, other older doorway elements, and the Spanish just came in, they saw what was left, they said, hey, that's a lot like the ruins and structures we have back where we live. So they did what they did in France and Spain. They took those structures and they rebuilt them. They resurrected them in a different form with rubble inclusions and, and additions. But they did try to, I think, put the structures back together, at least somewhat faithfully in some instances. And some of these elements may be pre-Spanish. Wise Up was talking about that in one of his recent videos. It's titled Mud. It's his most recent video, I believe. It's a, it's a heretical thought, right? That there are classical Greek and Roman ancient sites in the Americas. But I, 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 from what I've seen so far, guys, I, I think it's a very plausible scenario. If it was, if it was trade and shared knowledge, or if it was the same culture, that's open for debate too. We know about the cocaine and tobacco, tobacco mummies, 
and the uh, the, 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 that those plants only grow in America. So how did they get into the Egyptian systems? So the idea of ancient trade and contact is highly likely. And what? How long? And how far back does that go? So, a lot to think about with this episode, guys. I know I ran it really long, and I stammered a lot, and babbled, and, and I had no idea where to, to go with this, because this this kind of threw me for a loop once I was into the new world. I said, okay, well, now I'm, I'm really deep in a rabbit hole. What am I looking at? You know, Spanish and Incan and Mayan and Olmec and all of them. Who, who, now what am I looking at? So after this, guys, though, we get back to the list, and I had to take a break from the Americas because that that was all shocking and overwhelming to me, and I, I'm familiar with Brian Forrester's work, so I've seen all the sites from his perspective as well, and same with Hugh Newman, so I, I can, I have a pretty good grasp of all the sites in South America, I didn't look at Pizoc, I didn't look at uh, some of the other, uh, like I said, that site in Ecuador, which is this thing. What is that? It's all swoopy, puffy, perhaps polygonal in areas. It looks defensive to me. That top piece looks like it could be contemporary. It does have fill, or cement, mortar in between. Let's see if I can find a good picture of this for you real quick, guys. That's pretty decent. So yeah, you can see that this is a crazy looking structure. It's in Ecuador. It's one of the only sites, I think, in Ecuador like this. It's like a chulpa tower almost. It's oval with this structure on top. But it has a stairwell that goes around to it. Kind of looks defensive to me. But I don't know. And, and, and this, this building on top, I think it could be contemporary with the rest of the structure. I don't think it necessarily could be later. That's a pretty decent looking structure and goes along with some of the stuff we've been saying. It was just, uh, they didn't want it, they didn't need it to be that, that great looking in South America, so they just, uh, they did the bare minimum. That's interesting. Or it was just a different process because they were different stones or different building materials that they were using, whatever they were, whatever these rocks are now. So, different things to think about, different approaches to tackle some of this stuff, but it's, it's an open mystery, guys, that's why we're talking about it. That's why I have this channel, and... The whole point is to just get discussion out there and get it going between all of you guys who I know, hopefully, if you found me through Chuck or Matt, you know, I know he gave me shout outs and I know you probably see me in the comments of some other people's videos, but if you found me through any of those, you know, avenues, then I consider you guys the best critics and the best skeptics and the best investigators in this mystery because you follow the guys that I follow, and I I don't want to be sensational and be uh, all about my views and any kind of monetary value. I want to try to get a forum going for all of the best you know YouTubers who are into these ancient mysteries. And I, you know, just from being in the comments for years in these guys' videos, you know, I'm I'm familiar with a few of you guys and some other guys. I'm I'm starting to learn for the first time. You guys are really impressing me with some of your insights. Uh, but I, I feel like, yeah, we, we've had a lot of different uh, good uh, independent views, and I'm giving you some of my independent views, but no one's really starting to tie all these different views together and see how they fit together. And I think that's where you know we're at the point now where we've got enough investigation data from the different independent researchers that we can now start piecing some things together and making some connections on our own, and just, uh, you know, critiquing these independent researchers' ideas. And if they're if they're no good, we have to throw them out, and we can't support them, and we have to tell them in their comments, say, hey, it's, this doesn't work, and this is why. Or here's a connection, and this is why. You know, we can help them out. They, they Most of these guys do take criticism, and they, they appreciate, you know, when, when you have a nice insight, and some of them can be pretty grumpy, and... Some of them won't even talk to you, but it, it, at least it's worth the effort to try to reach out and to connect because 
that's the only way we're going to solve any of these mysteries. And the story just gets more and more fascinating and weirder and weirder the more we get into this. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. We're going to go into this maybe for about five more episodes, I think. Hopefully we can get it done, but the list keeps on going. It keeps growing every week or month, every time someone gives me a link or I happen to stumble upon a site. So who knows how deep this rabbit hole goes. But we'll try to uh, get some of those other albums fleshed out too, so we'll have some other things to talk about than just bevel blocks, because you can already tell we're going into tangents and we're going to need to categorize some of this stuff a little bit better. So thank you guys again, and we'll talk to you next time.